Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to our Committee of Adjustment hearing. This is a hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Pelham. Everyone present will be given an opportun opportunity to comment on the applications being heard. Please address your comments and questions through the Chair. This public meeting has been called to satisfy requirements of the Planning Act and Council bylaws. Notice of this meeting has been given by prepaid first class mail to all persons listed as owners in the last revised <coughs> assessment rule within 60 meters, 200 feet of the subject properties. In addition, a public notice sign has been posted on the lands. Agencies commenting on applications may request that certain conditions be imposed. Should an application be approved, voicing objections to these conditions will not adversely affect the committee's decision. The purpose of the application and relative correspondence will be heard, following which the applicant will be given the opportunity to address the application. Any person concerned with the application will then be given an opportunity to speak. Please state your name and mailing address for the record. At the conclusion of the discussion, the committee will render a decision and advise of any applicable conditions. Specific wording for the conditions will be determined by the committee following the public portion of this hearing. All interested parties are invited to be present. Copies of the decisions will be mailed to the applicant or agent and to any other person who files a written request. There are colored forms for this purpose which are available on the back table. Hopefully, hopefully you have used them. Any person, corporation, or public body has a right to appeal either decision itself or the conditions of the consent to the local appeal body within 20 days of this decision for a minor variance and within 20 days of the mailing of the decision for consent applications. I'd like to introduce the panel. To my far left is Sandra Marsh. To my immediate left is Bill Sheldon. To my immediate right is Holly Wilford, who is our acting secretary today. She's the deputy, dep also the deputy clerk for the town of Pelham. And Nancy Bizzato, sitting at the table, um, who is the clerk for the town of Pelham and is also our secretary for the Committee of Adjustment. Does any member of the panel, panel have a pecuniary interest in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? If any of the applications be considered at this hearing. Sandra? No, I have no conflict. Bill? And I have none. Ms. Wilford, are there any requests for withdrawal or adjournment? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes. We have received a request for adjournment for consent application file B2 slash 2019P 204 Canberra Road to allow the applicant times to satisfy the concerns of the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority regarding drainage. If acceptable to the committee, I would request a motion in this regard, Sindai. The first file on our agenda is application A5-2019. 16... Um, for you, Mr. Chair, yes. we, we need to deal with the request for adjournment. We would oh. need a motion on that. Can I have a motion on... Make the motion. Adjourn. Move by Sandra. A seconder, please. A seconded. Bill Sheldon. All in favor of the motion? Thank you. Uh, the first file we're to consider is A5... 2019, 1362 Maple Street, Pelham. Um, would you please read the, uh, the summary presentation, Ms. Wilford? I'll just wait until... Are there any representatives present for this particular application? Could you please come and sit at the table? State your name and your address, please. Uh, yep. Here. Yep. Please. My name is Rob Belcher. The address is 1362 Maple Street, and this is my wife. Or, do you want her to speak for herself? No, I'm Sue Belcher. Miss Wilford. Okay. Application for minor variance. File A5 slash 2019P, 1362 Maple Street. 
Excerpts from Planning Report. The subject land is located on the west side of Maple Street, lying south of Highway 20 West, Regional Road 20, known municipally as 1362 Maple Street. The applicant is seeking permission pursuant to Section 45.2A1 of the Planning Act to permit an extension of illegal non-conforming use to setbacks to facilitate construction of an addition to the residence. The existing northerly side yard setback distance is 1.2 meters and the southerly setback distance is 4.9 meters. The current bylaw requires a 9 meter side yard setback. The original dwelling was constructed in 1951 according to MPAC prior to the existence of the town zoning bylaw. To date, the following comments have been received. Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, no objections. Niagara Region Planning and Development Services, a permit was issued in 2018 for a new private sewage system located west of the dwelling. The plans submitted for the minor variance application match the previously approved plans and thus we are satisfied with the septic system. The proposed septic bed must meet the minimum 5 meter setback to the driveway. The proposed addition meets the required setback from the core natural heritage features on the property. Therefore, environmental planning staff have no comments. Public, no comments have been received. Section 452A of the Planning Act grants powers to the Committee of Adjustment to allow for the enlargement or extension of an existing building which was lawfully used for a purpose on the day the applicable zoning bylaw was passed which would then prohibit such a use. The Town of Pelham Policy E2 Nonconforming Uses states that it may be necessary and practical to allow an extension or enlargement of nonconforming uses through the granting of a minor variance. Policy E2.2 states that the Committee of Adjustment may, without any amendment to this plan, allow an extension to a nonconforming use and shall consider the following. The size of the extension in relation to the existing operation, whether the, the proposed extension is compatible with the character of the surrounding area, the characteristics of the existing use in relation to noise, vibration, fumes, dust, smoke, odors, lighting and traffic and to the degree to which any of these factors may be increased or decreased by the extension. The subject lands are surrounded by agricultural operations, limited rural residential dwellings and significant woodlands. It should be noted that the existing residential dwelling was originally constructed in the early 1950s and predated any local municipal zoning bylaws. Based on the existing parcel geometry, it is mathematically impossible to satisfy the side yard setback requirements. To proposed extension of this legal non-conforming, non-complying use should not facilitate any adverse impacts with regards to land use incompatibility, storm runoff, norm, normal farm practices or privacy. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application satisfies the Planning Act. The subject application is consistent with provincial policies, the regional official plan, and complies with the general intent of the town official plan and zoning bylaw. Planning staff recommend that the application file number A5 slash 2019P be approved. The following conditions are suggested that all necessary building permits must be obtained prior to construction commencing. Do you have any comments you'd like to offer to the committee in support of your application? Uh, no, we, think, we feel that our application is complete as it is and speaks for itself. Uh, does anyone from the committee have any questions? <coughs> I have no question. Do you have a question? Um, is anybody willing to make a, a motion? Uh, public comments? Uh, oh, is there anybody from the public who uh, wishes to comment on this application? Uh, seeing no, uh, nobody willing to comment, can I have a motion, uh, Sandra, move that 
uh, move motion that for the motion be grant uh, the application be granted with the condition as outlined. <laughs> Do I need to read that? Uh, with the condition that all necessary building permits are required prior to the construction commencing to the satisfaction of the chief building official. Through you, Mr. Chair, the um, secretary would ask that reasons be given for the record. The application satisfies the Planning Act and the Town Policy E2 non-conforming uses. No adverse impacts are anticipated for the surrounding area. The proposed expansion is compatible with the character of the area and is not anticipated that an increase in negative in impact will result from the addition. This application is granted without prejudice to any other application in the Town of Pelham. No objections were received from commenting agencies or abutting property owners. The Committee of Adjustment considered the written and oral comments and agrees with the minor variance report analysis and recommendation that this application meets the Planning Act test for minor variance. And the applicant is aware the proposed septic bed must meet the minimum five meter setback to the driveway. Can I have a seconder? I'll show them. Thank you. All in favor? Steered. Good to go. Just Thank wait for the much. decision. <laughs> Thank you. And make application and watch to relocate your septic bed. <laughs> Our second application for today is application A62019 of 1510 Belfour Street in Palm. Um, is there anyone here who wish to speak to the any of the representatives, please have a chair. State your name and your address. Uh, my name is Colton Caverhill. I live at 1510 Belfour Street. Application for minor variants. File A6 slash 2019P, 1510 Belfort Street. Excerpts from planning report. The subject land is located at the northwest corner of Highway 20, west of Belford Street, and known municipally as 1510 Belford Street. The minor variance application requests relief from Section 7.7D, max accessory building height, seeking 6.17 meters, whereas 3.7 meters is permitted. To date, the following comments have been received. Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, no objections. Niagara Region Planning and Development Services. A sewage system was installed in 2007. The site plan submitted incorrectly showing the tile bed location underneath the existing driveway. It is actually located near the southwest corner of the property. No objections provided no plumbing or living space is included and the reconfigured gravel driveway does not extend any closer to the rise tile bed than what is currently public. No comments have been received. Is the variance minor in nature? Increasing the accessory building height to 6.17 meters is minor given the rural context. No negative impacts are anticipated by the adjacent neighbors. The setback of the building minimizes the impact of its height on nearby properties. Is the variance desirable for the development or use of the land? The variance request to increase the accessory building height is desirable for the property as it allows for enhanced storage and use of the facility. Does the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan? The proposed use of a building accessory to a single detached house is permitted in the specialty agricultural designation of the official plan and the policy does permit uses which are compatible with agriculture. The increase in accessory building height will not compromise the objective of the official plan. The variance is appropriate given the site's rural context and meets the general intent of the town's official plan policies. Does the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? The size of the proposed accessory building's height to 6.17 meters is appropriate given the rural context. Ample amount of open space is available on the site. Thus, 
the increased height will not adversely impact the agricultural character of the area or surrounding countryside. The variance maintains the intent of the zoning bylaw with respect to accessory building massing, sitting, and locational scale. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application meets the four minor variance tests laid out by the Planning Act. The subject application is consistent with provincial policies, the original official plan, and complies with the general intent of the town official plan and zoning bylaw. Planning staff recommend that the application file number A6-2019 be approved. The following conditions are suggested. A necessary building, all necessary building permits are required prior to construction commencing to the satisfaction of the chief building official and shall not be approved for living accommodations or plumbing within the accessory building. Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak to this application? Do you have any comments you'd like to offer to the committee to uh, help us weigh in your favor? Uh, no, I think the application is pretty straightforward and speaks for itself. Are there any questions from members of the committee? None. Through the chair. Um, is the, as I understand it, the additional height requirement for is for additional storage? Is that for personal equipment or is that for business purposes? Yeah, it's for, it's a storage loft um, for personal use. Thank you. Seeing no comments, can I have a motion uh, on this particular file? Move to Sheldon. Seconded by? Uh, is the motion to approve? To approve. Or? To approve. Seconder. All in favor? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, could we please have some reasons oh. and the conditions to which this application may be subject to, if any? Uh, the reasons variance is minor in nature, minor given the rural context, general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw is maintained, the intent of the official plan is maintained, proposal is desirable for the appropriate development and or use of the land, Property as it allows an enhanced storage and use facility. The application is granted without prejudice to any other application in the town of Pelham. No objections were received from commenting agencies or abutting property owners. Committee of Adjustment considered the written and oral comments and agrees with the minor variance report analysis and recommendation that this application meet the planning Act tests for minor variance. The applicant is aware of the requirement for setback distance between the driveway and the existing tile, tile bed. Uh, one condition that all necessary permits are required prior to the construction commencing to the satisfaction of the chief building official and shall not be approved for living accommodation or plumbing within the accessory building. Okay. The third file we have on the agenda for today is change in use. It's A7 2019 895 Tice Road. Uh, are there any representatives wishing to? State your name, your address, your affiliation. Hi, my name's uh, William Haikup. I'm a planner with Upper Canada Consultants. I'm the agent representing the owner. Along uh, with me here is Ron Brower from Brower Building Systems, uh, the prospective purchaser of the subject site, subject to committee's approval. Can we have the planning report, please? Application for minor variance, file A7 slash 2019 P 895 Tice Road. Excerpts <clears throat> from planning report. The subject land is located on the north side of Tice Road, lying west of Maple Street and known municipally as 895 Tice Road in the town of Pelham. The applicant is seeking permission pursuant to section 452A2 of the Planning Act to permit a change of use to the legal non-conforming use in order to allow the lands and accessory building to be used as a contractor's yard and office. The proposed tenant, 
Brower Building Systems, Inc. would assume occupancy of the existing building. The business constructs prefabricated buildings, including agricultural structures such as barns and greenhouses. To date, the following comments have been received. Public Works, no comments. Niagara Region Planning and Development Services. According to our records, a sewage system was installed in 1973. At the time of our inspection, no obvious defects were observed at the southwest corner of the property where it is located. The proposed change of use does not appear to increase flows as it is comparable to the current use. Additional lands are available for future septic system needs if required. No objections provided there are no increase in sewage flows and enough usable land remains available. Public. To date, four pieces of correspondence from the public have been received in regards to this application. Full copies of correspondence have been sent to the committee members for their review. The below is a brief summary of listed concerns. Loss of privacy, increase of garbage, increase of noise, higher traffic slash road issues, dust issues, lower property values. Section 452A2 grants powers to the Committee of Adjustment where any land on the day the zoning bylaw was passed was lawfully used for a purpose, may permit the use of such land for a purpose that, in the Committee's opinion, is similar to the purpose for which it was originally used or is more compatible with the uses permitted by the zoning bylaw. The Town of Pelham Policy, E2, Nonconforming Uses, states that it may be necessary and practical to allow the extension or enlargement of nonconforming uses through granting of a minor variance. The subject land has historically been site-specifically zoned to permit an automotive, glass sales and service shop. Thus, the described use is legally recognized at a zoning level, but would be considered legal nonconforming at the official plan level. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application for a similar change of use to contract yard and offices is more in keeping with the Green Belt Plan and respects the policies of the town's official plan, which encourages agricultural and agricultural related uses. The reason is because part of the applicant's business scope includes regular construction of farm buildings and greenhouses, which directly supports the agricultural industry and agrid food network. The applicant is advised that rural residential neighbors have expressed concerns regarding unsightly objects, noise, traffic, and dust. And because of such, they should ensure that garage doors are closed when practical, and equipment and material be stored behind the west building wall surrounded by the existing fence and row of trees. Staff note that the storage area is screened from public view by a board on board fence. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application satisfies the Planning Act. The subject application is consistent with provincial policies, the original official plan, and complies with the general intent of the town official plan and zoning bylaw. Planning staff recommend that the application file number A7 slash 2019P be approved. The following conditions are suggested. Plant a row of trees along the easternly edge of the parking lot, extending plus or minus 30 meters from the front, from the front lot line and plus or minus 40 meters along the front line east of the parking lot to the satisfaction of the Director of Community Planning and Development. Uh, Mr. Highcooper, Mr. Brower, do you have anything to add to the uh, to the summary? Yeah, I, gu I guess I briefly just would like to uh, talk a little bit more about the proposal. Um, I think from a, a starting point in the provincial policy, it really dictates down through the Greenbelt Plan and, and through the Niagara Regional Official Plan that conversions of these uh, legally existing non-conforming uses are permitted given that no municipal services are required and um, we don't propose to make any expansions into the key natural heritage features or key hydrological features. Um, with no changes proposed to the actual building or, or parking orientation um, other than the new condition that's um, 
come in with the trees. Um, we feel it's in, in compliance with all the applicable policy as indicated in the planning report. Um, you know, it, we looked at um, the different tests um, in the town's official plan regarding um, compatibility, buffering, and we feel that the proposed use is not um, more impactful and in fact is less impactful than the existing use. Um, and that complies with the policies in saying that, yes, it's legally non-conforming, but what we're proposing to do is more in conformance with the agricultural area. Um, and, and on that basis, we feel like it should be supported. Um, and I think, I think I'd like Ron to add just a little bit of the details about Brower Building Systems and, and some of the work that they do, um, including uh, how many people would be on site in, in that thing. So if you can pick that up. Ron. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, Brower Building Systems uh, is just over a year old. I used to be the owner of Brower Construction. I noticed in one of the letters Brower Construction's been mentioned. Um, I was bought out by my brother and started Brower Building Systems. We predominantly build pre-engineered buildings in the agricultural sector and in the town of Pelham and Smithville. Several of my buildings have gone up in the last year. Uh, United Flo UFD, corner of Camborough Road and Victoria Avenue, in addition to their warehouse in Smithville, Niagara Christian Gleaners, across the road, Big Country Raw, in Beamsville, uh, Corneef Produce on the QEW, across the road, Up Cannabis. Those are very um, common w ways that I build, mostly, but not all. It is for the agricultural sector. I have a total of nine employees but only two work in the office, myself and the secretary. So there will be very limited people parked at this new building, probably two vehicles. The, I do not have a shop right now. I rent one because I'm new and I have an office in my basement of my house. I hope to move out of the basement of my house, much to the dismay of my wife, and uh, have a shop where I can store some equipment. Um, but most of my equipment stays at the job site, gets moved from job site to job site. I own no large equipment. There will be no uh, tr uh, bulldozers, uh, excavators sitting on this, on this site. I only own five pickup trucks. And at the job sites, I do own two forklifts and one aerial lift that get transferred by other drivers from job to job. At this point, they've never gone back to the shop that I'm renting because I've had enough work for that. But if they do come back, I've promised to store them out of sight, not on the front lawn. I don't think you're gonna see any changes to what you have there. I, I have read all the uh, neighbors' concerns and I understand them. I also, I, I, I get it. I'm not here, but there, there will be very l much less impact than what they have right now. Now, the owner of the building is the closest neighbor, and he has the house right behind the shop. It's a very nice house in the trees, and he picked me because he knew that he would come out of his driveway and be looking at my place. And um, so I think that in many ways, it's going to go back to the way it was, a very small company located in an agricultural area. And I do respect the concerns I have from the neighbors. And I don't think I'm going to give them any grief at all. I think they'll be very happy to have me there. When you, when you see the sign, contractor's yard, I understand all the red flags go up but that's not really what I'm bringing to the table. Now, the last thing is people may say, well, if you sell the property, it's still a contractor's yard. The owner that is selling me the property has the first right of refusal. He will buy it back because he doesn't want to have an unsightly mess either. <clears throat> so that's kind of a little bit of the history of what's going on here. And uh, I hope the committee can support this proposal. Um, is there anyone in, in the audience who wishes to comment on this or ask any questions? 
If so, please come to the uh, the podium, state your name and your address, and. Uh, and Hello. I live across the street okay. from the proposed site. And I've owned my property since 1998. Um, it was a very quiet neighborhood at the time. Uh, Doug, uh, Doug Bath had a, actually a marine glass outfit there, and he had approximately three employees. And one of my boys uh, worked for him a little bit in the summertime when he was going to high school. Um, I think anyone that's here uh, from our neighborhood is opposed to um, such a business. Actually, I'm opposed to uh, the current business that's there now, which is a countertop business. Um, I don't believe they have permission to be there. Um, it was fine when it started out. There was only a few cars. Um, now there's at least 25 cars parked there during the day. There's four or six uh, work vans and a cube truck. There's a lot of traffic, um, as well as um, the fellows are goofing around at the end of the day when they're leaving. Um, they're speeding up the street, they're racing, they're coming in at night on lately on snowmobiles and quads, at least one quad. They've had an, an incident there recently because of their fooling around. Um, so there's a lot of racing going on up the street. Um, you brought up a good point, which I had written down as well, you know, so now if the town approves to be a construction yard, yes, now so you can turn around and sell it and then, you know, a bigger company would move in and bring more mess, more noise and heavy traffic, heavy construction equipment going up and down our street, which is already like full of potholes. Um, and I came to this meeting, what, I, what I've seen is most of these have been approved before um, we bit, the public has even heard anything. So I was really surprised to see that at the meeting. Um, I did prepare some papers to give to you, and there are other properties for sale uh, that, that I think would be much more suitable, which includes the... Um, the property on the corner of Maple Street and Highway 20, which is for sale, the old Bromac office. Ah, it's an acre and a half. It has a small office. You're saying you have small um, employees. It has a garage, which would house your equipment that you say that you have now. And you would also get highway exposure, and it would be conforming to what you're already doing. As a new business, um, only one year old, I would think that you'd, you know, want to get a little more advertising. Um, when, when I Googled Brower Building Systems, nothing came up except the uh, Upper Canada Consultants Report. <laughs> well, I don't have a website yet. That's why. Um, I, I come from a long background of construction. My dad owned Newman Brothers Limited in St. Catharines. Um, he retired, and then my brother, Philip Martins, owned that. Could you, could you please address your comments to the chair? Pardon me? Please address your comments to the chair. The chair? Me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I come from a long background of construction, and um, I know the type of equipment that is necessary to run a business, even if it's just building. And I just state my case that I do oppose um, such a facility going in. I think there are much more uh, usable places in, in commercial areas that are available currently. Okay? I'd like to make one, I heard your one comment. We have not made any decisions. We listen to everyone. And we will make a decision on this application based on the planning report and the comments we receive from the public and, of course, the uh, the applicants. Yeah. I was basically stating that on the last two that I seen it as it came up on the board. Um, it, it had already basically been approved or 
accepted and then I guess you have to make your final decision here maybe is that how it basically that's the way it works we we get comments from commenting agencies that are requested to, to comment on all the applications could be the conservation authority the Niagara regional health unit uh, region of Niagara uh, our own planning staff and we we take all that information together and we make a decision and um, we put on conditions some of the times the conditions are brought up by the, the neighbors sometimes they're brought up by members of the committee but no applications are not approved prior to the hearing yes Thank you, Mr. Chair, I would just like to advise those present that uh, the reports that you see on the screen are a summary of the planning report, which is uh, the analysis of how the application either complies with the provincial, regional, and local planning policies, or how it doesn't comply. The first two applications that you saw uh, did both comply with all of the provincial, um, and regional, and municipal planning policies. Uh, however, that is the planning department's report and their their recommendation that it be approved. The committee, of course, has the quasi-judicial authority to uh, make their own decision, and that's what they are compelled to do. So I just wanted to address that as oh, well. Okay. Thank you for your clarification. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wish, in the audience that wishes to comment on the application? Yes, sir. Please uh, come forward, state your name and your address. Mo Edwards, uh, I own some property on Tice Road, and uh, I strongly oppose your business moving in on the Tice Road area. There's been a lot of traffic on that road already with the Canby Orc, and I have to agree 100% with what Sandra just uh, remarked about. Uh, I, I really don't know how the town could even let this thing even get this far. Why would you even entertain such an idea? And it was on the board. They had approved it, or there was no objection to it. This thing should have been object objected to a long time ago, and it never, ever should have got this far. Do you understand that? We're, we're here because the application has been made. Yes, and, I know and the application has been made, but it should have been refused to begin with. You never consulted the, the other people in the neighborhood, the other property owners in the area, to begin with. Under, under the Planning Act, everyone within 60 meters is a registered I property owner. I realize that. It circulated a copy of the application. There's also a notice board placed on the property that anybody driving by could see. And yes, that sign was up the day that I did drive by. So. The residents did have an opportunity to at least well, come in. Okay. I, I heard about it through word of mouth kind of thing. And everybody that's, that's talked to me about it is, is very much opposed to this. And that's why I'm here today. And I thank you for your comment, sir. Do you, uh, Mr. Haiku, Mr. Brower, do you have anything to uh, respond to the... Uh, yeah, I guess um, just in terms of what the existing provisions are in terms of uh, the automobile glass um, and service station, I think the permitted uses are, could be much more noxious than what we are proposing. Um, we're not proposing any heavy mechanical machinery um, such as metal grinders, anything that could be associated with a, a car body shop um, and, and glass repair. So I think that considering the scale of the proposal and that it is more in conformance, has agri-related um, uses to it, I think on that basis it meets all the applicable provincial policy and based on the staff's planning report, um, you can see that the existing site is under site plan control. They've asked for a little bit of an additional buffering to address those concerns but I think that the site would operate at a smaller scale than you can see it operating at today. Um, and if there are any, um, you know, concerns about the future of this, any changes that would happen to the property would be subject to a site plan amendment application. And therefore, 
any of those changes would be reviewed by the planning department and have to be approved prior to that work <coughs> being completed. So beyond the land use um, policy perspective of it, there's that extra layer of site plan control that can be applied to the property <coughs> to address any of these concerns. But I think it's very clear from the proposal and the sketch that any of uh, the, the buffering, dust, noise, traffic will be reduced um, by what the proposal is. Thank you, Mr. Anku. I'd like to make one comment. This business and that building was, brought, was constructed prior to the town of Pelham's official plan and original zoning bylaws, so that's why we're here. Uh, the, the land use was established long before, and that's why it was installed as a legal non-conforming use. It meets, it doesn't meet the town's official plan requirements, which I think is agriculture. Correct. Strictly agricultural. And our, and our job here today is to look at what's happened in the past, look at the planning policies that are in existence today, and, uh, and come to some form of decision. Is, is there anything else? Uh, any comments from the, uh, any questions from the, from the panel members? Mr. The Chair, I have a question for um, the proposed tenant, Mr. Brower. Um, I understand that you are just the tenant. You do not own the property currently? That's correct. However, you had indicated that you have a right of first refusal. Should the property be sold? No, the, the owner right now, who I'm buying it from. Correct who's the neighbor in the back. Mm -hmm. If I were to sell it, he would have the right of first refusal so that he could ensure that he wouldn't have a company in there that he did not approve of. Okay, so you are the owner of the property? Well, they, well, no, oh, you, are the t you are the proposed tenant, right. and the owner no, is the general. I'm the proposed owner. If this gets approved, then I would, I would hopefully be able to close on the deal the, the, the land or the, the property. And then I will rent back the building to Cambria Quartz until I can build them a new building. They hope to move to Thorold. So the Cambria Quartz is leaving. They've purchased land in Thorold and they're gonna build a new building there. They're going to move into the new building and at that time I will move my business in. Okay, um, so through the chair. Yeah. When is all this, the timeline for this supposed to transpire? <coughs> the, the ownership of, change? And um, the May is ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then within one year, Cambria Courts would be leaving. And they're going through site plan approval right now in Thorold. Okay, and through the chair. Do you, oh, an sorry. Do you anticipate that your operation within that timeline within a year from now is going to require the entire space? And are you going, is, is, is it the intent that the occupation of Brower, Brower Building Systems is going to occupy the entire space? Or is there, are you intending to sub, sublease to another company or is it just all for Brower? I, I, I've been um, asked to sublease and they said no. I prefer just to have it for myself. And I, I do not have any intention of subleasing anything. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, outside storage, is that a listed accessory use or is it a permitted use under the existing bylaw? Through you, Mr. Chair, I don't have that information in front of me. Sorry, I don't have that information in front of me. I'd have to go and get the zoning bylaw and see. Could we wait, Mr. Chairman? I think it goes to the core of this application as far as these people are concerned.
maybe while we're waiting for uh, uh, Nancy to come back, um, your your contracting business doesn't. You basically, if you have site grading or that type of thing on on one of the sites that you're building on, you would normally subcontract that out to. A, so you're correct. not planning on purchasing a D6 or a D8 or a, a, a no. float or a, a no, sheep's foot roller or any of that type of equipment. You're no. you're basically into the uh, um, metal fabricated exactly. pre, pre yeah. prefabricated metal building structure. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so I think that that allays some of the fears about outside storage. Your uh, the equipment you do use skipjack and that type of thing yeah you're going to have to put that inside the building i'm sure you don't really want to store that outside for any length of time um, the only time the equipment would go back to the office or to the shop is when if i didn't have work or had to get service right now it doesn't get serviced by me it goes to red track so i've never had it back at my sh the shop that i rent um, most of my equipment is rented okay <coughs> I take my units to mind, so we just carry on. Mr. Chairman, while she's going through the bylaw, I would also like her to uh, review the bylaw as it relates to the definition of contractor yard and office. Is that defined in the bylaw? And if so, what's the definition? Yes, please come forward. Hi, my name's Neva Gregg, and I live in the Tice house. It's the old house that was John Tice's house, old greenhouse. We now got trees all around it, so you hardly know it's there. It's uh, across the street and a little bit west and uh, so I'm curious if you do well will you no longer be renting the d6 or whatever you said will you get your own do you hope to grow the business to a point where you have all the equipment you need without having to rent it chair so the excavation part of my business is I don't do not rent that equipment. I sub that out to sub contractors like Ken's excavating or Anthony's excavating. Okay. Swirsky construction and Pelham here does a lot of my work. So that part of the business, no, I don't want to grow. If I were to grow anything, I would in all honesty, I would prefer to buy more of my aerial equipment for installing my buildings instead of renting it. Right now, I only own one piece of equipment, and meanwhile, I rent four or five, and um, that, that's the part of the business I would like to grow. So no, do I, do I look at trying to grow the, the heavy equipment? No. In fact, the opposite. I don't even want the truck to move my equipment. I want nothing to do with it. Trucks don't make money. Um, so I even hire people to move my equipment around if I have to go from one job to the other. So that's really, I do not plan on changing the front lawn. As you see it, when you drive by, I don't plan on changing anything. You're not gonna see equipment. You're not gonna see a bulldozer. It's gonna look like the way it does right now. That That is, in essence, what I've promised. From my uh, window, I see your backyard. I see the yard behind the fence where uh, the 10 vans are stored now. That's yeah. what I see. Yeah, and I cannot control what's there now. I can say that it will be improved when they leave. And there will be two vehicles, mine and the secretary's. And my doors are open. You can come and see me anytime you have any complaints. I'm, I'm, I don't want bad neighbors. I want everyone happy. I understand that. 
Thank you. Any other comments? Any other questions from the from the audience? Uh, my name is Thomas Taylor. I live at 900 Tice. Uh, my comments are uh, what I've heard so far, in fact, doesn't sound that scary. Uh, when I made uh, my written submission, I had mixed up Brower building systems with Brower construction. Our concern is having large amounts of storage equipment and large amounts of large heavy machines that would start up at 7 o'clock in the morning and blow diesel fumes all over us. I haven't heard that. But we are a little concerned what happens in the future if they sell the lot. Now that it's a construction zone or a construction yard, can somebody come in and bring those kind of uh, pieces? Uh, the other thing is, is there a way for the planning department to say they sh should not increase the size of the gravel areas so that uh, the car parks and the machinery or the storage yard in the back doesn't get any larger than it already is? I'll defer to, to the to our secretary. Would that, if they wanted to alter the landscape of the property, Nancy, they'd have to go through site plan control. Mr. Chair, the property is under site plan control, so um, any any changes would require a okay. site. That would site plan approval process. Yeah. So any any substantial changes to the property would would require so changing the amount that's gravel and grass yes. that's a planning approval. Yes. Okay. That would that would be considered a, a site plan your power your issue. battery guide. Well, it's probably not that it's probably just because I haven't touched the screen when it's touched the most And uh, no it had a sign up there saying you <laughs> change the power source. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna tell you before we got it. <laughs> Goodness, I'm just all over the place today. <laughs> Mr. Chair, may I have? Yes, Mr. Brown. Uh, I appreciate the comments. Also, I have mentioned to the town that I would look at paving the front portion till, let's say, till the back of the shop. And heavy contractors don't pave; they'll crush their asphalt. But I, I, I have heard the comments about the dust. And I, I've, I've also mentioned to the town that I would pave the parking lot, get rid of the dust, easier for me to clean the snow, but there, it proves to, should prove that I'm not there to bring in heavy equipment. And um, just thought I'd make that comment. Thank you, Mr. Brower. Are there any... Uh... Other comments from the members of the public in attendance? I actually have another question, sir. Certainly. <laughs> um, when Mr. Bath sold the property, I think it was in 2010, um, he asked us if we wanted to buy it. And we had younger children. We weren't in a position to. What he informed us at the time was... Um, that you're also able to build a personal residence on that property. And I'm just wondering if you are still able to do that. I have no. I don't know. To be very honest. It, For you, Mr. Ms. Chair, Ms. Uh, Ms. if it is a separate lot, then um, you would be permitted one dwelling on the lot. On that current lot as it is, you're permitted one. Yes, um, through you, um, Mr. Chair, though, any dwelling that would be constructed would be new construction, so it would need to comply with the municipal zoning bylaws in terms of lot coverage, in terms of setback. The existing buildings would be considered into that lot coverage calculation as well. So it wouldn't be... Um, it wouldn't be permitted to be like an expansion to the existing buildings because it's a different use. It would be residential use. So that residential uh, construction would need to comply with all of the requirements for zoning bylaw in terms of setback, law coverage, building height. Um, and even though uh, Mr. Brower has given Mr. Bowman first right of refusal, 
Um, what's to say that Mr. Bowman, who owns the property currently, isn't going to sell his property because he doesn't want to see a construction yard or anything else. Even though, you know, we give first right of refusal, it, I don't think that it really means a whole lot. That's just my opinion. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. M Mr. Chair, if I may, I think we're a lot of the dialogues getting outside of... Outside kind of the scope of the, the variance. I agree. Okay. Thanks. from the zoning bylaw, uh, the A60 provision, um, which is the exemption for this property, uh, says nothing shall prevent the continued use of the lands indicated as A60 for automotive glass sales and services and uses buildings and structures accessory thereto. So that was the um, what permitted the Bath automotive glass to operate. Um, because that was uh, recognized as legal non-conforming use. So it was there prior to the existence of the bylaw, so then it was brought into what they call, uh, under the Planning Act, brought into conformity with the bylaw through recognizing that legal non-conforming use. Um, in terms of business office, there is a definition in the zoning bylaw. It means a building or part thereof in which one or more persons is employed in the management, direction, or conducting of a public or private agency, a business, a brokerage, or a labor or fraternal organization, including but not so as to limit the generality of the foregoing, an office accessory to a permitted non-residential use, a telegraph office, anybody remember that? <laughs> Um, a bank, the premises of a real estate or insurance agent, a data processing establishment, a newspaper publisher or a radio or television broadcasting station and related studios or theaters, but does not include a retail store or a professional office. And you asked me about storage, outdoor storage. Although there is a definition, I don't see any restriction to outdoor storage in an agricultural zone, but I am not a planning uh, expert and I'm not a planner, so I can't interpret the zoning bylaw for you. Is outside storage a permitted use or an accessory use? I'm, I'm just going to look up the definition for outside storage, means storage of goods in the open air and unenclosed portions of buildings which are open <coughs> to the air on the sides. However, I don't see a reference to that definition in the agricultural zone um, under permitted uses. So uh, permitted uses would be agricultural uses including greenhouses, seasonal or permanent farm help houses, um, farms larger than 10 hectares, one single detached dwelling on one lot, home occupations, kennels, animal hospitals, uses buildings and structures accessory to the foregoing forestry and conservation uses are the defined uses in an agricultural zone. So contractor's yard is not defined, nor uh, uh, but office is. This is why they're asking for the ex the uh, change in use to permit this contractor's office. That's what the application. Is. <clears throat> My problem is that the use being requested is a contractor's yard, which is not defined in the bylaw. Therefore, what is a contractor's yard? So if Mr. Brower does outgrow this property, there is no restriction on the sale of the property. There's no definition of contractor's yard, which we will be permitting. And therefore, the next use has, has the right by law and under the zoning bylaw for outside storage and the use is a contractor's yard <coughs> without restriction. Um, <clears throat> I'm not opposed to what Mr. Brower is applying for. What I, what my problem is, it's becoming as wide as it is long. And I don't know to what extent this municipality can give control or do we want to give control or do we want to control um, 
the implications of the success of the application, i.e., we go from what we have to a contractor's yard undefined and a outside storage undefined. Um, Without reference to the applicant, uh, Madam Secretary, does the municipality have the ability and authority, if the applicant were to agree to a deferment, to define contractor's yard and outside storage in this case in negotiation with the applicant and bring it back, having defined those two? Uses? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If the committee uh, wished to receive more information, you could um, defer the decision. The hearing panel would be seized of the application, which means because we've already started talking about the application, you would need to convene again with the exact same three members, and we would notify anyone who is interested. If the committee wishes to receive more information from the planning department in terms of what provisions might uh, might be applicable or conditions that might be appropriate for um, approving this change in use, then that certainly is in the committee's um, purview to be able to do. As I say, I'm not... I, what I, what I, my problem is I don't want to have to put any restrictions on the applicant in terms of growth. The only restrictions that the town has in terms of growth is if he outgrows the site and comes to us with an application for site plan approval through the planning department to increase the building, to increase the paved or graveled area for outside storage, those kind of things. The other implications of growth are that he, the same reason the granite company is leaving is they've outgrown the premise and they're moving on. So Mr. Brower outgrows the premise, goes into an industrial area for a, a contractor's yard, but has the right to sell this property for an undefined use contractor's yard and outside storage. I don't think we've improved the situation. We've improved it in the short term. We're not improving it in the ultimate term. Um, I don't, uh, all right, um, through you, is it appropriate, Madam Secretary, for the um, members of the committee and or the chairman to ask the um, applicant his opinion on my concerns and whether he is, I know he's got a deadline. It's a conditional sale on purchase of a piece of land subject to the approval of the Committee of Adjustment including appeal periods. Um, <clears throat> how fast can we turn this around if he agrees to a deferment? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> you can ask for clarity on any, any questions or concerns that you have. You can ask them at this time. The other option is uh, to impose conditions that are relevant to the application. So if the committee so chose, you could impose conditions um, on the approval for this change in use that are, in the opinion of the committee, um, relevant to that requested change in use. Um, as for how fast we can turn this around, it would depend on how quickly we can get the information that the committee is looking for from the planning department and how quickly we can reconvene um, these three members uh, with the availability. <coughs> The applicant, and we would also uh, be required to notify anyone who has uh, provided me with a form to be notified. Mr. Chairman, if we put a condition 
on the granting of this application and the condition is sub is that the granting of the application is subject to the applicant agreeing to the defin the de defining of contractor's yard and outside storage with the authorities having um, jurisdiction, i.e. our planning department, and I suppose, anyway, I'm not gonna get into those weeds. Would that be an acceptable condition? For you, Mr. Chair, um, the condition would be something that has to be um, remain on file with this property file so right. that if anyone looks at it in the future they understand that there was a change in use permitted by the committee of adjustment under this section of the planning act and that is restricted by um that condition it, the way you're proposing it in my opinion sounds somewhat ambiguous um i would i would prefer to see a condition state exactly what the committee would um permit in terms of the intended use. It sounds just a bit open-ended for me. <coughs> uh, Go ahead. Madam Secretary, uh, it sounds like there is not a definition in the existing zoning bylaw defining what a contractor's yard is. I'm not able to find a contractor's yard. So maybe that is the first thing. We could defer the application with, the under with a, a report coming back from the planning department or defining the contractor's yard. It may be more applicable to actually have the applicant proceed to an actual zoning bylaw amendment for the property. Through you, Mr. Chair, defining contractor's yard doesn't make it so in the zoning bylaw without making an amendment to the zoning bylaw. That's right. Because so there is nothing in the zoning bylaw that's not there can't be added by a minor variance. Okay. It, it so really then we can't we really shouldn't even be considering contractor's yard because it's not in the zoning bylaw. The planning department has reviewed the application. Um, perhaps the, um, the agent for the applicant has more information on their conversation during the pre-consultation process. Yeah, I, I guess if I may add, Mr. Chair, uh, my understanding from the planning department is that outdoor storage is permitted in agricultural areas. Um, so that can certainly be addressed by the condition that outdoor storage be behind the buffering on the west side like the planning report has indicated. I think we can address that in a way um, that, that suits the needs of Brower Building Systems. Um, in, in terms of the definition of contractor's yard, while we can't come up with something right now, um, if it were to become a legal suit, they would result in the Oxford Dictionary definition of that. And I think we all have a, a general idea of the English language and, and what that means. Um, I don't think, in my opinion, there isn't a large concern for the ambiguity of contractor's yard because the site is under site plan control. Therefore, if the building becomes, is expanded or proposed to be expanded, we would have to go through that site plan control. So while, yes, there is the use component to this, there is also the details relevant to the property that are controlled through the planning department and and the site plan control and agreement that get put on title um, in in my opinion the applicant and uh, the towns has already had dialogue and agreed to the condition of including landscape buffering along the front and east side of the property the two areas which don't have any sheltering from the street front right now I think by doing that we're addressing any potential buffering concerns and ambiguity in the wording of contractors yard um, I, I understand the committee's um, position but I think what we're proposing here today and and what controls the town has in place for the existing site plan control are more than enough to address future concerns that you know we have no idea what the situation will be ten years from now ten years ago it, it was something different and and that changes over time so I think we've got to deal with the application that we have in front of us now and not get, um, you know, extrapolating down to scenarios that could potentially happen without no knowledge. Mr. Chairman, um, through you to the Secretary, 
was the application to the Committee of Adjustment to, the, to change the use to contractor's yard, was that their term? No. Or is this a planning term inserted uh, for, clar for uh, ostensibly clarification to the committee? What was the, ap what was the application actually for? and service to a contractor yard and office. The intent of the proposed change is, is in use is to facilitate storage of tools and equipment for the construction of agricultural and agriculture related prefabricated buildings. Um, while I have the floor, Mr. Chair, if I yes. might, um, I would just like to reference that any imposition of conditions must be something that, for example, can be um, enforced through the zoning because it would be um, a change to the zoning provisions. So um, if the committee wanted to impose a condition that storage of all equipment be either in the buildings or um, not stored visible to the neighbors, that would be something that is enforceable. Um, if the committee, um, for example, imposed a condition for the um, planting of trees or if uh, for example, you could impose a condition that ties, if there were new construction, you would tie it to a building permit prior to issuance of a building permit, because that's something that can be enforced by town officials. Uh, but to um, put something that is not enforceable as part of the zoning change uh, would not be recommended. See, to me, the application should be for office and outside storage use. End of story. But he applied for a contractor's yard, which is an undefined use in the zoning bylaw. If, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, the existing auto shop, I, I don't believe, or glass repair service shop, I don't believe there's a definition for that either. Um, well, that, that's a sin that we're not going to try and correct, create. If I may, Mr. Chair, the, the word contractor's yard, the first time I seen it was on the yellow sign. It, it was, it was I, I did not know. Um, what they were going to classify me as, and that's what they came up with the planning department. That's what the plant, but yeah. the application. That's what the application says. Right. But the application. I didn't write that. I didn't write that contract. Yeah, I did, Ben. Well, that did. was based on the pre-consultation notes that were done. Okay. So, I mean. Yeah. I guess technically it's true. I'm an agricultural contractor, but. You you can build anything you want, because there's no use restriction. On you as a contractor. That's correct. Um, if you want to take it to its extremes, you could become an excavating contractor and put every piece of excavation equipment in the world in that place. Yes, that's true. But the, and I'm the, trying the, to get the opposite to, is true, I'm too. I'm trying to get to the... No, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it as far as these people are concerned. Right. And that's why the... In the application that says I will store whatever material on the west side of the building behind the fence, okay, that, that's part of this application. So that was discussed. If I had equipment coming... Do you have time to do a deferral? Well, it depends on how long the deferral is, eh? How long would it... I would have a month, but we'd have to be back here in a month. We schedule more than that. We're scheduled, what, months in advance? For you, Mr. Chair, this, this hearing panel is seized. I would have to call a special yeah. meeting of this hearing panel to reconvene. But um, the proponent, the purchaser, was in the middle of a sentence, so maybe... Would you agree to a deferral? I would prefer that you would say today on this application that the that the um, the application is based on that there's no visible outdoor storage because I believe that's doesn't doesn't cover my concern, let alone their concern. That once the application is granted for a contractor's yard. An undefined contract. This thing goes 
everywhere but north. It, it can go south. The implications, Ron, is, uh, sorry, Mr. Brower. No, it's fine. The implications are, take it to its logical conclusion. Either Mr. Brower wants to become an excavating contractor, or Mr. Brower, once it's permitted a contractor's yard, and Newman Construction comes around and said, I'll pay you twice for the land because I can't find a contractor's yard. I'll pay you twice what you paid for that land so I can store my equipment there. And guess who's got egg everywhere? The same could say um, agriculturally. If, if it's agriculturally... But that's my problem. It's that's as wide problem. as it is It long. is, because you could put 30 tractors there. Absolutely. And you could put old combines. It, yep. It, it, that's not the intent of this application. I, <laughs> that's I, why. I know that, yeah. and you know that, know. and these people know that. Yeah. But unfortunately, what happens when it hits the paper, and not the newspaper, the, the <laughs> document, and somebody picks that document up and says, Whoa! I got a contractor's yard. And somebody comes to Mrs. Bizzotto and says, what's a contractor's yard? And Mrs. Bizzotto goes to the zoning bylaw and said, I have no idea. And the same thing with agricultural. Oh, no, no, no. Look. Exactly. Yeah. Because what I could happen? I would argue that yeah. for a nanosecond. Right. All right. Chair, you may wish to have all comments directed through the chair. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, your wisdom, Mr. Chair. <laughs> this is are why we, you get are, paid the okay. big bucks. Are we ready to render a decision? After the discussion, I, I have a number of questions, and, and it really, I guess, it revolves around the zoning bylaw. The zoning bylaw currently does not address what a contractor's yard is, and I know what some contractor's yards look like. You can see them on Allenburg Road, south of Highway 20. I don't think that's what we really want to see in the town of Pelham. Nope. Um, maybe we've used the wrong words in the application because the intent of the proposed change in use is to facilitate the storage of tools and equipment for the construction of agricultural and agriculturally related prefabricated buildings. Doesn't necessarily mean a contractor's yard. True. We have a building on site that can be used for inside storage. Some of your building components could end up in the inside storage. They will. What I'm, what I'm afraid of with the contractor's yard definition that I'm looking at a contractor's yard and I'm seeing 150 ton cranes, D8s, D9s, uh, piles of lumber, piles of rubble. Um, that's what I see in a contractor's, and I know that's not what you're intending to do, but by agreeing to this definition, the contractor's yard, now we're wide open to all kinds of uh, different interpretations. I personally would like to have a little more information from our planning staff to see if we can come up with a reasonable condition that will not allow the creation turning of this particular piece of property into a what I have seen in the past as a contractor's yard which is usually full of rubble used timber um, green barrels broken equipment um, yeah so maybe that's maybe that's where we should maybe where we should proceed um, and with that um, Mr. Chairman, without regard to the applicant's issues in terms of an agreement of 
purchase and sale and conditions I'm and not whatnot. Worried about any of that. That's that's beyond the that's exactly. Beyond. So I am going to recommend that this application be deferred, so that the applicant and the uh, and uh, planning staff the planning staff can get together and uh, resolve the definition issues, or maybe and and that that would probably include the amendment to the wording of the application. If that wording were amended, Madam, through you, Mr. Chairman, if the, amend, if the wording in the application were amended, does that constitute a new application? Yes. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, no, that would not be a new application. That would be an amendment to this application. Um, I'm just wondering if there might be the potential to resolve that now and um, make part of a motion that... Could we make it subject to a revised definition of contractor's yard? Can we amend the definition? Can we amend the application at this meeting? If it brings it closer to the requirement of the zoning bylaw or to what is permitted in the zoning bylaw. We can amend the application. If it brings it closer to the, pro the provisions of the zoning <coughs> bylaw. So if it goes beyond that, then no, you can't. Okay, I think we're leaving ourselves in wide open jeopardy. Here. I, I think you would need to consult with the um, the applicant and the agent as to what the intended use is and what they would want that defined as, as opposed to the contractor's yard. <coughs> well, I, I think we'd want it defined as uh, a, specifically an office and, and warehouse space. Then. Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> office, warehouse space with outdoor storage as an accessory use. To the main use. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. I do need some outdoor storage. Ab absolutely. And I understand and, that. And you do need some warehouse space. I do need some warehouse which space. Which is in that, which you can accommodate inside the building. They already have that, yeah. yeah. Half of it is warehouse. So maybe, so maybe the we're starting to move uses. on the right track here. The primary uses are office and warehouse and outside storage is accessory to the main use. Correct. Which means it's secondary to everything else and is controllable. Your, your storage is already limited uh, by, the, by the space. Um, I know what you're thinking too, and I, and I have a tendency to agree with you, sir, um, that outside storage must be related to the primary use of the business. So the primary use of the business, according to the application, is for the construction or the installation of prefabricated buildings. So the outdoor storage. Uh, I don't think you want to be bound no. by that. If, you, if you're not into the prefab building business in two years, you don't want to have to be back here. No, You're a contractor. Equipment and construction of agriculture and agriculturally related prefab buildings. That, that's that's really the application. Going to be storing. That's the I, application. I, I'm not opposed to that. You're you're not. No. So that means you get into the housing business. This is a no-no. Got it. You get into the excavation business. That's a no-no. Yeah. You get into any other construction business except Butler buildings and. Greenhouses. I'm surprised you knew Butler. <laughs> You're out of business. Braymar. Well, yes, anything to do with construction, constructing an agricultural building like I do right now, I should be allowed to do that. So that that's really what I do right now, as I, I actually erect buildings. No. no. The application is for agricultural buildings. Right. Not buildings. You can't put up a warehouse, according to this. Well, I put warehouses up, but they're for agricultural uses. Yeah. You can't build a warehouse for Newman Construction. 
No, I, I can't tie myself to, to my business. Well, that's what you're doing. No, I don't want to do that. Just understand what you're doing here. Well, I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't say for doesn't agricultural say uses in the application. No. It says, well, uh, what do you, what's, what's the chairman from, reading okay, from? Hold on a second. To facilitate the storage of tools and equipment for the construction of agriculture and agriculturally related prefabricated buildings. That's the application. That's through your planning report? That's what he's making his application for. It did not I, state and I can, that. I can agree that the, the, the use is strictly for. And if, he's your willing question, to, if he's willing to go. Absolutely. It, I'm, and that's a road I'll go down. <laughs> and and rate, we're really dealing strictly with the application as it is written As it's here. written. That's correct. For you, Mr. Chair, the term yes. warehouse is defined in the zoning bylaws. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so if the application is amended to permit office, indoor, where, indoor storage, and outdoor storage as an accessory use to the main use for the purposes of, how do you read it? Storage of tools and equipment for the construction of agriculture and agriculturally related prefabricated buildings. No, going, that's okay. Going that, strictly that, on that's that. Fine. I actually had to put my glasses on. <laughs> do you agree with that? I do. Do you agree with that? Mr. Chair, I would suggest that that be a condition of approval. Yes. Thank you. So moved. Do I have a second? <laughs> now, would you please go through? We're going to have to dream up a yeah. condition. Um, I, I have the um, I have uh, essentially what the member said as a condition. Okay. Okay. Um, the application for permission pursuant to Section forty five two A two of the Planning Act to permit a change of use to the legal non conforming use in order to allow. The lands and and building that's deleting the word accessory to be used for uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair. I would suggest that the exact wording, if you just give the gist for the motion, yeah, we will get the exact wording. Okay, Very good. Um, to allow the lands and build existing building to be used for office, indoor storage, and the lands uh, used for outside storage as an accessory use to facilitate, storage of use and just to facilitate as per the applications. As per the application, there's two key things there. It's the existing building. That we're dealing with it's inside storage and this outside storage must be accessory to the main use those are the key factors agreed agreed everybody agree everybody understand as far as the people here are concerned that means the existing building cannot be enlarged without coming back here and you being notified the outside storage area cannot be enlarged without coming back here. There is no definition of what can be stored inside or outside the building. And the other main use is office. And that's it. There is no longer any reference to contractor's yard. It's outside storage and inside storage. So everybody understands that. And the restrictions are, again, existing building, existing outside storage areas. Okay. Be granted. Be granted. The applicant uh, satisfies the Planning Act and the town policy nonconforming uses. Similar change. Oh, God. That... 
the similar change of use to as we as discussed. I, I, do you want me to put it in? Okay. Uh, outside storage. Whatever. Office. Accessory use is more in keeping with the Greenbelt plan and respects the policies of the town official plan. Similar change of use is not expected to generate any unreasonable negative impacts for adjacent use or the community at large than what is currently permissible. I think we've achieved that finally. The application is granted without prejudice to any other application in the town of Pelham, the Committee of Adjustment considers the written and oral comments and agrees with the minor variance report. I don't, but anyway. Analysis and recommendation that this application, this application meets the planning tests for minor variance. Um, the planning of tree conditions. Are we imposing a condition on the wording of the application now or are we changing the wording of the application it's a condition you want condition? it you want it as a condition I would recommend it as a condition through you mr. chair yes I think as a condition we're going to amend the application yeah. uh, actually through you mr. chair I would suggest that um, there be a notation Specifically, that states the approval is recognized not to include um, contractor's yard. I'll nuance that wording, but uh, I would suggest that that go in as yes. uh, a condition. So, as the conditions, we have the plant a row of trees thing, and then subject to negotiation between the applicant and the secretary, further conditions apply as to use. You agree with that? Yes, I just, when it's all done and written out, I'd like to have a look at it. You'll be part of it. You know, you'll, you'll definitely, <laughs> you will see a copy of the decision, and I would suggest to you, Mr. Brower, that uh, you may wish to uh, to talk to Ms. Mulford. Do you have any issues answer. with what you see? No, um, I, I, I guess it's just the, the only thing would be if you made a small modification to the building, the existing building, not necessarily enlarging it, but let's say you're doing you know some work to that with the existing building were it quoted in there prohibit any change whatsoever let's say a, a, a sewer blows or something or a, inside a inside the building is your problem it's yeah. the existing inside the building building is our problem do want to bring one thing up I did ask the planning if I could construct a sign for my business at the road signs are permitted under the bylaw yeah okay so they said that was fine yeah. Signs are permitted under the bylaw. There is a separate sign bylaw. Okay. Yep. So instead of contractor's yard, we're changing it to warehouse, basically. <laughs> yeah. And what else? Office, what? inside oh, storage, and outside storage as an accessory use to the main use. Right. Yep. Accessory the, use from what from my business is yes. it's an yep. accessory yep. use. So I'm not subbing it out or, or the existing building. I'm good. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay, we can grant it. Do we have a second? All in favor of the motion. Very. Thank you. That's democracy in action. Thanks. Do you realize what has been done? storage to relate to the existing business um, not the existing it's mr. Brower's business well, mr. that's what I'm saying mr. Yeah. Brower's business um, what's to say even still when he sells the property or if he sells the property um, this is pretty well a site-specific zoning because this well the decision of this committee is, will ride on that property I mean it's it's monitor um, Mr. Brower uh, of all the buildings that he's going to be building. Is, is there going to be someone going and monitoring that they're all agricultural no. buildings? No. 
No. Thanks, Thank Thank you. You. The next item on the agenda, of course, is minutes, and we don't have any minutes from previous meetings. Um, I'd ask for a, uh, a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Signed remarks. Bill Sheldon. All in favor? Gary.